Okay, I'm going to try breaking this while on screen and melting it down and making some chain links and maybe something else. There's plenty of glass, so let's see what happens. Thanks for watching. Click like, click subscribe, click share. I'm almost up to 140 subscribers. Wow. I mean, 150, excuse me. I'm at 147 right now. I do appreciate your watching and your good thoughts. It does make a difference in my life. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. Good afternoon, evening, morning, whenever you're watching. I'm glad you are watching. These are one of the latest long neck Mountain Dew bottles. Yes, it's going to have glue all over it, but it should burn off. I should have had this done beforehand, but we're already there. Want to see you? For, let you see it from beginning to end. The original Mountain Dews. This was silk screened on. You couldn't even try to take it off. It was burned into. It would burn. It's. It was painted onto the glass. The only way to get it off would have been to acid etch it off, or burn up and melt off just the outer edges. Okay, let's get that one off too. May as well. No, I'm not too stuck with it. Now, put on some safety goggles. I'm wearing my dyes at the moment, so that's close enough for me. And let's see what happens. Stronger than I thought. Oh, come on! <laughs> let's try the outer side. There we go, all over the place. Holy freaking cow. Okay, now I've got plenty of green. Have to clean that mess up, won't I? Now let's light the torch and see what I can do with it, huh? There we go. I'm going to turn off one of the, the big oxygen concentrator I have. I won't need that much flame to melt this stuff. Let's see if I've got an original green to start out with of course when you want one there's never one around so at the moment I'm going to have to make do and just use a piece of boro again with soft glass like this you really don't need a big big flame you just need something to start melting the glass Let's see if I can find a piece of grab around when you want one. Oops, didn't warm it in fast enough or long enough. I was too busy thinking of other things. Let's do this right, huh? <laughs> this is what will happen to you guys when you do it too. You know that. Oh, this one is basically exploding. This may not be like the regular Mountain Dew bottle glass that I'm used to. The Mountain Dew bottle glass, you can really make some neat stuff with it. Got to warm it in. That's the main thing. Warming it in is half the battle. Yep. Didn't get much there. Laugh at me if you want to. If I can keep a hold of one of these. Come. You know what? Where? That's the thing about glass. It's going to frustrate the living daylights out of you at times. And other times, you'll have a lot of fun with it. And feel very accomplished at making something out of, like for example, this soda bottle. Five minutes ago, you could have gone to a, a state and gotten 
ten dollars for it. I mean ten cents for it, not ten dollars, excuse me. Okay. That's the truth. Not said. Let the glass flow. I let it round into a nice little blob. And I'm going to stretch this out. And I'm going to make some green chain links out of it. That's the idea anyway. If anybody is interested. If not, you don't have to watch, I guess. Like, close your eyes. There we go. It's stretching. Continues to stretch longer after uh, than Boro does. That's the thing about soft glass. It has some nice qualities. But there are bead lovers. Like the color variations that you can get from Boro. I mean from soft glass. All right. Warm it in. The colors you can get from soft glass. The palette is so much brighter and stronger, I'll have to admit. But for me, Boro is my main glass of choice. And yes, you can make a lot of animals out of one soda bottle. One at a time. That's the cool thing about glass. Of course, it doesn't hurt to anneal it. And if you don't have annealing, get a can of vermiculite and warm it into that. I mean, you, once you finish something, stick it right in the vermiculite. Let it cool at its rate instead of the rate at the room temperature, which it cools faster. But in the vermiculite, it cools at a very low rate, and more of it will be saved. Um, this takes me back, literally. When I first started, I picked up propane blow. Uh, I picked up a propane blow blow torch that you would solder water pipes with at a um, local department store and then picked up some soda bottles and started pulling twisting and stretching I didn't even know what didymium glasses were for the first three eight months I'm glad I found some I've been at it you know I've had I've been wearing didymiums the rest of my glass blowing career. It has its moments. Okay, here we go. It's getting down to about the temp and the flow that I want it. Surprising how you can just sort of melt it in. Okay, I'm going to make this one long rod here and then I'm going to make some green chain links out of it. And I'm going to do some a couple of different things too. I have some ideas that I'd like to give it a try and see if it'll work. I'm not saying it will until I look at it. But anyway, first you make the nice long thin strands. From there you can make the chain links. And from there You find your weakest link. <laughs> now the thing about these small pieces, really tiny pieces that I make out of soft glass, they're so small that some of them you can get away without annealing them. I'm not saying that that's the case for you and don't get me wrong there, but it does help you get down the road if you have to. But it's only the tiny, tiny ones, not the bigger ones. If you do something about the size of an inch or more, actually the stuff I do, it's a, about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch in size and shape. Look at there, it's even spotting out right here from this soft glass that I just did. 
Okay, I'm going to thin this out just a little more. And I'm going to change the flame depths because I'm not trying to melt the whole big piece at the moment. Just a little piece at a time. Okay, take it down. Take it down. There you go. You don't need a big flame to... No, you don't need a cannon to kill a mosquito. This is the first one. Don't need a hoop to start it with. Here's the second one. Glass is a very neat medium. I really like it. Before I went into glass, I was a pencil drawer. Tried pen, tried acrylics. Knew I was going to be an artist, some type of an artist, because I love to draw. The thing I like about glass, I couldn't draw a straight line. With glass, it can draw the straight line for you without too much trouble. Okay, get it in there, come on. Link three. That one's a little thick, let's thin it out a little more. There we go. All this woken up Mountain Dew bottle all over my table. How was I supposed to know it was going to explode? I should have known better. Don't even know if I'm going to show this or not. <laughs> if I do, <laughs> okay. Frustration is a thing that you can get from glass. And there are days... And no matter what you do, it's going to try to get the better of you. But don't fight the glass. The glass will always win. It's set, it's set, it does follow a pattern. follows a set of rules. It melts at a certain temperature. It bends a certain way. And if you don't treat it right, it's going to crack and explode on you. It's following a pattern. It's following a set of rules that it has to follow. You, on the other hand, are the one that comes up with those basic rules. And when you can literally bend them, but you can't break them, it's always going to follow those rules. So don't try to force the glass. The glass will always win. You may think you have folded it but you haven't. Glass is its own medium. It does its own thing. And who would have thought you could have taken something so fragile and making something totally different than what it was five minutes ago. I could even make a that's a good something green to make. Incredible Hulk! <laughs> yeah, that might be an idea. Do little green men. <laughs> Who knows? I'll give it a try. See how it goes. Mountain Dew Bottle Men. We'll see. I don't know why I'm getting into the mood of doing a couple of videos today, but I'm glad I have. I want to show you something. These links that I've already done are cool. 
but you can pick them up. This one is kind of thick and big. I'm going to make something else out of this one. See? But once you follow the rules or the, the pattern that the glass has to follow and work within its parameters to create the world as your oyster. There's several people in Torch Talk on Facebook that I am really excited to follow because of what they can do with their glass. And because of the, the subtle things that I have told myself. And we listen to that subconscious voice that says, no, you'll never make it. You can't do that. I went, went outside that border today. One of the things I did was a, uh, I had done a long time ago. It was a craze, probably about three or four months ago, about Q-tip holders. And I made one just like everybody else, but I wasn't satisfied with it the way I made it. It, it uh, did the job, but it just needed to be deeper and it needed to be, I guess, more pronounced, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, I took that Q-tip holder and revamped it and made it from one thing to another. Um, look on my Facebook page or Torch Talk Hangouts page, no, Torch Talk page. I don't think I did it in, uh, in Tips and Tricks, but I should probably do the before and after in Tips and Tricks. Okay. Yeah, I'm sort of melting it thinner than what I made it when I was working it, but when you're working it, sometimes you gotta deal with just getting it usable. And then from getting it usable, you can manipulate it better. Okay. You can manipulate anything. Oops. All right, Graceful. I don't think I'm getting beyond that big bulbous nub there. I gotta melt it off now. There we go. Let's see if that'll do. Oh yeah. Okay, let's see what I can do. I have an idea of trying to connect these two together and make some more chain link as I go, but I don't know. I also want to tell you the smaller your flame the more accurate you can do things. And if you want to make a smaller chain link, the smaller, I, have used to, I used to have fun playing with chain links. Just coming up with ideas to do with chain links. I just haven't done it in a while and I felt very, I did uh, a butterfly demo today. A clear glass butterfly. And on it, I put a link that made it more of a dangly. And that's the thing about the chain links. You can put two or three of them together. And if you have something that was just near the ear on in some earrings with the chain links, you now have them more dangly and away from the ear if you want it that way. So it's a... Uh, 
something to pull out of your repertoire that and also sometimes you'll do a a pendant piece and the loop would be facing in the wrong direction it would uh, make the pendant piece that you made hang sideways on the pendant on the chain or whatever but with one of these you add another loop and it changes the direction of the pendant so it sits correctly on a necklace piece well I think that'll do for today I hope you enjoyed it it's getting a little long anyway have fun enjoy your day.